What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Igmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So, what I wanted to do today, uh, I wanted to start upgrading our ME drives. Like, last episode, we made another ME drive, and we put in some 1K storage cells, and we haven't put anything on these. But what I was thinking is we should just go ahead and start upgrading these to the 4K, just so, yeah, we're... We have a red light here, which means we have too much data on that particular disk, and it doesn't have all the unique types filled up. So if we have more room on the disk, we could put more of that same item on there and just have more available space. So yeah, I think upgrading to a 4K is probably gonna last us for a little while until we get really into starting to store things in our applied energistic system. So I just got done making this IO port, and this thing really isn't that expensive. Um, it does cost two of the ME drives, which does require us to have these iron casings, which we already have auto crafting set up for, uh, well, for everything except for the 10 electron tubes and I guess making this uh, item in the carpenter, but we already had some of those in the system. So really I just had to make one iron item casing in order to make this entire thing. Uh, so anyway, we have this thing set up and the IO port will allow you to move data from one disc to another or you can take all the data off a disk and move it into the network, or there's various different things. You can take items from the network and put it onto a disk if you wanted to do that. Yeah, anyway, so let's go ahead and just add that right up here. That should connect to the same cable that's behind our terminal. Uh, so we can put in acceleration cards. So we're gonna wanna do that. Let's grab three of those. Three, okay, we'll toss those in there. Awesome, so these 10, Discs that we made last time. We're just going to go ahead and disassemble all of those. You can throw that up into your, what is that? Fluid storage housing. Interesting. Yeah, so you can put them up here into your crafting grid to take out the cells. You can reuse the housing if you want to upgrade your discs to a higher level later on or, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can also shift right click them if they're in your hotbar. Yeah, it's another way of doing it. But you cannot shift click like you can't take apart a disk that has data on it it won't allow that so you don't have to worry about losing your data so anyway now that we have these storage components we can throw that in here and then we can look at making ourselves a 4k storage component i just made the recipe for that we want to make 10 of them and it looks like we have everything ready to go oh no it does have to craft up uh 20 more of those things but that's fine that's sh this whole process should go fairly quick since most of the things are already crafted. Okay, so there is 10 4K discs. So we can place those in our crafting grid like so, shift click them and there is all of those. So what we wanna do at this point is I want to take all of this data out of here, all the 1Ks. We're gonna replace those with the 4Ks. Nope, wrong one. There we go, like so. Uh, so we have the 4Ks in here and we wanna take all the data that was on this and put them back on these discs. So we can do that since this has the highest priority. Reset that last episode, that's a five. Everything that we put into the network should go directly onto those drives over there. So we can just toss these guys in here like so. Oh, actually, hold on a second. These are all empty, why are those all empty? Oh, I guess only some of them are empty? I'm confused what just happened here. We took these apart, I made the four Ks. Uh, maybe it's just transferring super fast, like really fast. Okay, that must be what's going on. So anyway, all the data is off there. The data should now be down here. Yep, and you can see we only have orange light, so that's pretty cool. So we can take these guys, take them all apart, like I was just talking about, shift right click them if they're in your inventory. Actually, it looks like, do it this way, the auto fill, that's awesome, that's faster. Uh, we can place these guys back into here and tell it to make 10 more of the 4Ks. So now we're running into issues where we're running out of components that can be automatically crafted. So we need Certus Quartz dust for something, probably to make the pure Certus Quartz crystal. So we never told the system how to do that, so let's do that now. Uh, so we need Certus Quartz. One of those is going to turn into a Certus Quartz dust, so let's manually craft one of those so we have the recipe. Okay, Certus, I already had that typed in there. Oops, this one. So that goes into there and we can place that into our pulverizer. All right, so now it knows how to do that. So if we tell it to craft the 4K once again, 10 of those, yep, that's all happy. We still need redstone, which we got plenty of. Let's make a couple stacks of that. Very good, 4K. 
And 10, do it. Oh, we need just a little bit more redstone. Oh my goodness. Let's take apart a lot more this time. Okay, <laughs> uh, 4K, 10, do it. Yeah, everything's good. So the auto crafting is completing. Yep, we're pulverizing down that Certus dust. It is making the Certus quartz seeds, or I should be making those here in a moment. Yeah, our network is still kind of slow at the auto crafting. This can go way faster <laughs> if we had everything set up. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the rest of our disks to the 4K and transfer all the data. We'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. So in the quest book here, we have a quest under getting started. Yep, right here for Enderium Sharpening Kit. Now, we made Enderium a while ago, but I forgot about the Sharpening Kit. So we can do this to increase our mining level. And it is a quest that is required for us to do. It'll give us some platinum ore and some ender pearls. So let's go ahead and do that. I just put four um, enderium in here. Yep, and we should be able to cast all that out. Four ingots into two different sharpening kits. One of them for our regular pick and the other one for our hammer. Yep, because I'm sure we're going to need both of those eventually. Uh, so anyway, uh, we need two flint. Grab that and we'll grab our hammer out of our patch as, pouch as well and we'll just go ahead and upgrade these so that changes it from a mining level of what did it say before us glue gloss into enderium or how we pronounce that i don't know so there is one of them and then we can do the hammer as well and we'll increase the mining level of this guy awesome okay so now we can mine even harder materials with these things so that's complete oh it's a choice reward let's just take the platinum we can farm ender pearls that's not a big deal in fact i just got back from the end and i farmed up some uh pearls because i saw that we were running low on them so i just grabbed like two stacks or so um anyway so now that that's done let's check out what else we have here harvest level 11 so that's terra steel i don't think we're quite into the terra steel territory yet yeah, we got some Terra Steel boots. I wonder, can we do anything with these to get Terra Steel out of them? Is that a thing? We can combine them combination crafting for Wyvern. Oh, that's interesting. So all these different boots. I wonder if these are all the same boots that we're getting from our mob farm. Okay. Now, what I was kind of looking... Oh, yeah, look at this. Terra Steel boots we can put into the Arc Furnace to get Terra Steel out of. Now, that's quite interesting. We have not done the arc furnace yet. Uh, that's something that we could do. And since we have the item repairer uh, and our mob farm, oops, went, went the wrong way. And our mob farm over here is collecting different mob drops, including armor. Do we have Terra Steel boots in here? Terra Steel. I'm not seeing Terra Steel boots, but we got a whole lot of different types of armors in here, right? So I wonder how many of these that we're collecting can be used for that recipe. I think fiery boots was one of them. Well, I guess we have terra steel boots on us, obviously. Um, yeah, I almost feel like it might be worth setting up our mob farm here to collect these armors, repair them by putting them into a repairer and storing in our ME system. Although it does take a very long time for things to be repaired. What is this? A Fluix crystal fry pan. Portly gentleman. Hmm. Must have gotten that off a mob as well. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I kind of want to get our mob farm up and running and like void out all of this stuff that we don't want so it's not filling up our inventories. But at the same time, I kind of want to keep some of the things that might be useful down the road. Ah, it's one of those things like I don't know what to do with that. But anyway, yeah, that is kind of interesting that you can uh, make an arc furnace to get terra steel out of those terra steel boots like that. Anyway, uh, so I guess we'll hold off on this until we need that for later. That'll give, that'll just give us four infusion crystals. And I think we've already gotten some of that from reward bags. And that looks like that's the premium right there. So we'd have to get far into magical crops in order for us to do anything further. Hmm. Anyway, uh, so I think what I wanted to do at this point. Yeah, I kind of want to get applied energistics over here to our IC2 machines. And as we saw before, the applied energistics cabling that we have down here, yeah, we're just running like one of these eight channel ones over here. 
I think we're already using like six or seven channels up already just from our thermal expansion machines. Yeah, I think we're going to have to start looking at getting into P2P tunneling in order for us to move more channels over there. Or we could just run a dense cable all the way down there, and that's a lot of dense cable. We might end up doing that eventually anyway. I'm not entirely sure what we should do at this point, but uh, let's look at doing some P2P channels right now so we can improve our applied energistic system and get more out of the faces of the machine or the, um, what are they called? The controller blocks that we have already. So P2P, we'll get into this, this guy. Yeah, so that requires Fluix, Crystal, Iron, and Engineering Processor. Let's make a recipe for these. I not clicked on the right one. Oh, I was on this thing. Okay, so we'll do that. And I do want to use the pure versions. So let's use the pure Fluix crystals there. Okay, we'll throw that into our auto crafting thing. We are running out of space very quickly here. Uh, so let's do P2P. I don't know. Let's make maybe five. Five is good. Five is a good number. So we'll just go ahead and start auto crafting up all of those. The processors are being made and there we go. Awesome. So P to P's. So I want to get three of those taking channels off the controller and then we're going to want some dense cabling. I don't think we made a quartz cutting knife yet. Oh, we did. Okay, perfect. And then we'll want some cable anchors. Looks like we have some of those already. So we don't need the quartz cutting knife. Uh, we are going to want to get some ME glass cable, just regular stuff. Okay, I think that's about all we need to do. So I made the advancement point to point networking. Awesome. So for right now, mm, how do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? Normally what I do with the ME controller is I use the inside faces of the controller blocks for P2P, and we might just do that here. I think we're going to get rid of this cable. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to have to move that somewhere else. Okay, let's let's do that. It's going to bother me if we don't, so we're just going to go ahead and do it. Uh, so we're going to move... Let's separate these first of all. We'll move that so it comes up the side over here. And I'll connect into that. Actually, that's not going to work because I need <laughs> all these faces over here. Uh, how do I want to do this? I guess I can move it so it comes up here and connects to like the front or something. Yeah, having limited amount of space here is really kind of a bad deal. I could also just add it right to the side here and then I'll have to disconnect this. That's probably what I'll do. All right, so I got that cable moved out of the way. It's not a very pretty setup, but yeah, it is what it is. So we want to put these dense cables on here. And the reason why I use dense cables is because those show you how many channels are being used. You can put the P2P tunnels directly on a controller block like that and get all 32 channels out of that face. But then you don't know how many channels that P2P tunnel is using. So again, I like doing it this way because you can get a visual representation of the amount of channels that are left on each of these controller faces, right? Okay, so that's why I do that. So you can place a cable anchor between these as you place these down to separate them so they're not touching. You want to make sure all of your channels that you are getting come out of uh, the correct controller face and they're not like coming from this one and moving over here then going out that way. I don't know if that actually even happens, but anyway, that's why I separate them. So we can place these P2P tunnels on there like that. So we have just three dense cables with P2P tunnels that are not doing anything at this point in time. All right, so we need to connect these guys, right? So all three of these P2P tunnels are now going into this wire, and then we're gonna wanna connect this wire to our main network. Okay, so we'll place a cable here, we'll do some cable anchors. We don't want this wire going into this cable, then going into the network. We want that all separated. All right, so we can just run that cable along like that. So these three P2P tunnels are connected through this wire into this controller face right here. This will all change a little bit later, but this is just the basics of getting the P2P to work with applied energistics. So what this is going to allow us to do now that these three are connected to our main network is we can just run this cable, which only allows eight channels, put a P2P off one of these sides, doesn't matter where, and have 32 channels available 
from any one of these three P2Ps. Yeah. So that's going to allow us to get a lot more channels going up up here. Uh, so let's do this. I'm going to put a P2P right there. It's connected to the network. We'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of this. We'll get rid of this. Okay. So what I like to do as well is to put a dense cable on the output side of where the P2P comes out of. Yep. And that way you can see how many channels are being used here. All right, so now that we have that done, let's go ahead and get rid of a few more blocks. We will run the cable like that into this dense cable. So now you got 32 channels available and we are using the same amount of cabling essentially uh, that's going through here. We're not changing up very much anything at all. All right, so now at this point, the only thing that we need to do is to make ourselves what's called a, a memory card. Yeah, memory card. Okay, so memory card. We do need a processor, the sir, the calculation one. Oh, we need Certus Quartz Dust. Okay. Didn't we tell the system how to make Certus Quartz Dust just a little bit ago? Certus Quartz Dust. Oh, you know what? I was okay. Yeah, yeah. Certus Quartz. Ah, ah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> So now that that's not connected to the main network, it doesn't know how to craft that recipe. So before we get started here, we will do it this way and this way, and we'll disconnect this. So we have, <laughs> we have the recipes available again. Calculation processor, make one of those please. Once that's done, we can disconnect it and have it go through the P2P. How are we doing here? Oh, it's making the seed. Now it's processing it. Okay, we are good to go. So now we should be able to make this guy. There's our memory card. All right. So now we'll disconnect these guys that we just temporarily put up there so we could have our, our recipes back. And that'll go like that, that'll go like that. So now uh, we just need to connect the P2P. Whoop, not that. We need to connect one of these P2Ps to that P2P over here. So I'm gonna do a shift right click on this guy, right? You see it says frequency BC1E. That's just random, that doesn't really matter. But then I'll allow you to look at this and then look at another one and be like, oh, okay, that one's connected here. Also, it shows these different color patterns on the back now, which is kind of interesting. So you can get a visual representation of where that's connected to. So just a right click over here will paste the information. You see the frequency is now the same. So what that's doing is it's taking the channels from here, piping it through this P2P, going into the network, and then we're taking the channels from the network over here into this P2P. So everything that's coming out here, you see this five of 32 channels, is being put into the network over here, five of 32 channels. Pretty cool, huh? So that way you can save on a lot of cabling, yep, and then you can pipe a lot of channels around. It's a little complex, but once you kind of get an understanding of how the P2P works, it really makes applied energistics that much better in my opinion. Okay, so now that that's all done, we can kind of fill in some of these spots here. Whoop, that is the wrong block. Uh, middle click, there we go. So we can do that, we can do that. Eh, it looks a little bit better. And then we're gonna want to change this up a little bit too. Um, you can have up to 32 channels here, but the way this is connected, like we can only have eight at the moment because we're using one of those small cables off one side of that uh, dense. So if we go off both sides of that dense, then we can get 16 channels. Anyway, we'll rearrange that as that's needed. But the important thing to remember here is now that uh, we have one P2P on this cable, this cable is only using one channel instead of the six or five or whatever it was before. So now we have a lot more channels available to run over here to all of our IC2 stuff. So now I'm gonna take some of the cable, get some interfaces, start hooking up the IC2 machines, and then we should be able to get those on AutoCraft. All right guys, so now that we're able to run channels around, I was going to start hooking up our metallurgic infusers over here to be automated, but then I remembered like in order to do this properly, we're gonna need a lot of resources, we're gonna need our, um, Enrichment chamber running pretty much uh, a lot. 
in order to fill up these machines and we're gonna want to turn these into factories and pretty much all of that stuff is gonna really well it doesn't require but pretty much is gonna require us to be in ender io and use the item conduits yeah we're not quite there yet so uh i took away all the extra machines that we had over here in preparation then i was like eh, we're gonna hold off but anyway, uh, in the meantime, I did run the applied energistics cabling over to our IC2 machines, uh, just the ones that are needed at the moment. I did make a second metal former specifically for extruding. So things that we need like these copper cables for, we can do that now. I do need to put in the upgrades here. We only got two overclockers in this one. If I put more than two in there, then it starts draining power faster than we can create and it's just not good. Uh, so I talked about this before we need to upgrade the power supply, but I still haven't figured out the best way of doing that That's something I'm gonna research here very soon uh, But anyway, so we have our compressor hooked up here the compressor is used for making dense tin plates or dense iron plates I went with dense tin plates and then I realized that we should be making it probably dense iron plates um, For making that second metal former we needed a basic machine casing so I had to do this recipe again, and we were going with this before since we had a lot of tin previously, uh, but now it's kind of like we have a lot of iron, but not a lot of tin, so I might switch it over to this recipe. Either way, uh, yeah, so had to make another metal former, and then while I was making that, we had to make more copper coils and all of this stuff. So uh, we have this extra metal former here so we can do that, and then the other one over here so we can make casings. Uh, the plates and stuff we're just going to make with thermal expansion. We could use a block cutting machine to do full blocks at a time, but it doesn't really matter since we can make plates pretty quickly with the compactor. So we might as well just go with that method. Okay, so now that the IC2 machines are hooked up, yeah, that's going to allow us to do a lot more auto crafting that requires those machines. So yeah, that's very, very nice. We can see on our interface terminal over here that the compressor shows up over here with that pattern. We have our metal formers here. Now they both are shown as just named metal former. So you don't really know which one's which other than looking at the recipe. You can put an interface into an anvil, rename it on the anvil. And when you set it, it'll show up here on the interface terminal with that name. So you could rename the metal formers, one of them metal former plate, one of them metal former, or I guess rolling, and the other one extruding. If you wanted to separate them out in that particular fashion, that is another option for you to do. Um, I was looking over here as well, and it, we have like an energized furnace, I think is what it's called, or redstone furnace, or what, electric furnace. We have the electric furnace over here, but we're never gonna need this, yeah. Every smelting operation we're going to be doing is probably going to happen on a thermal expansion macerator. There might be some specific recipe that we might need this for. I'm not sure. I didn't go through all 55 pages of it, but if that need does arise, we can just throw an interface on here and make that happen. Block cutting machine. Yeah, like I said, all of these different plates that we can make through this, we can just go ahead and do through a thermal expansion. There doesn't seem to be a real reason for doing it this method other than I guess you can get more planks this way but I think we were able to do that uh through the precision sawmill I believe so anyway fluid solid candy machine is pretty much exclusively used for making these upgrades so yeah we'll look at that sometime in the future but yeah I think the geothermal generator the whole IC2 power generation we have over here definitely I should look at all right, guys, so I was trying to figure out better ways of making EU power. Now, I remember somewhere in this mod pack, they were talking about the mechanism universal cables being able to transfer RF to EU. And I went looking through like everything I could find to confirm that. And I wasn't able to find it anywhere. Like I read through this, I read through the getting started. Uh, there's got to be like some kind of tips and tricks thing that I don't remember where it is. But anyway, uh, I just went ahead and I made myself some of these universal cables, which is kind of a pain to make because it requires these redstone iron wirings uh, that requires four of these wireless RF heating coils, which do not stack. 
and you can make that in the resonator. All right, so we had to make four of those, not a huge issue. Uh, then we need to make these basic coils, which require uh, impregnated sticks, which we can only make through uh, the carpenter at the moment. So two logs plus 100 millibuckets of seed oil, yep, uh, makes the impregnated stick. So I got that running over here, making a little bit of extras. I put a stack of logs in there, so hopefully we'll have extras of those eventually. Uh, put in some pumpkin seeds. Anyway, so that's still going. So we have these basic universal cables. So that is where we need it to be. So over here we have this uh, quartz cover on top of one of our flux ducts down there. So you can see when we place this thing down that it does fill up with power. So we are getting power out of there. Um, we can set our electric furnace right here and it, it does not collect EU power directly out of that flux duct. I trade that initially, hoping that would work, it does. And so we made these, so that fills up full of power. And if we place the electric furnace on there, it does get EU power. So I don't know like how much that power is, if we have to worry about blowing up the machines, if the machines even blow up still, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's why I was trying with the furnace since we don't really need the furnace. <laughs> if anything bad happens, like who cares, right? So that is going just fine. If I put one overclocker in there, it seems to be going fine. Uh, yeah, we're doing this together because I haven't tried this yet. I don't know how many overclockers I can put in there. Let's take four more out of that machine. Place those in here. That's going just fine and it's not using any additional power. Okay, so now I'm curious, like how many of those can we put in there? There's five more, let's try these. Have we put those in there, we might have a problem. Oh yeah, we do. Okay, so every one of these that you put in there, it's not a straight upgrade, it's like, I think it's exponential. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but if you put one in there, it says that it decreases processing time to 70 and increases power to 160. So I guess that means that's 60% faster, right? If you put two in there, then it brings it up to 256. If you put eight in there, it brings it up to almost 11,000, right? So that's a lot more power that it's using. Half of that is only 1,000, twice the amount <laughs> is 11,000. So yeah, it's quite a significant increase by doing that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure like how many we can put in there, but that seems pretty good. And this is just the basic universal cable, right? So these have upgraded versions. We can do advanced, which should be able to hold more RF and convert that into EU. But again, I don't know if that's going to give it too much power and cause explosions. I think that's something we should find out, especially since we're using, uh, this furnace over here that nobody cares about. Let's grab some more cobblestone. All right, let's try putting this cable on there and see if anything bad happens. Looks like that's filling up, that's filled up. We got those in there. That's working just fine. Okay, let's take that out. So just upgrading that one level to the advanced, uh, that allows us to put 10 of these overclockers in there. That's really good. I kind of want to grab all the overclockers that we have and just see like what the limit is just so we kind of know. Oh man, we got 18. Let's grab those as well. Okay, so we got 20 of them in my inventory now. Let's do this. We place those right here that uh, increases power to 1,208,000%. Yeah, that's stupid, isn't it? So that instantly made 13 of them. <laughs> That's kind of cool, I think. Let's try doing something more reasonable. So 115,000. Yeah, they can't do that much. Let's take those out. So it looks like about 13 of them. Seems all right. Mm. Okay, well, anyway, now that we know that we can provide IC2 power through these advanced cables, the universal cables, we can go ahead and get rid of this junk over here replace the IC2 copper cabling with these things. And I think that should be pretty good. And if it doesn't, if it turns out to be not so good, like we can upgrade these cables to the next level, and make it better, right? So I think that's what we're gonna do. 
All right, so all of the IC2 power generation has been removed. I've upgraded some of the flux duct from about this point all the way over here to the redstone energy flux duct, the stuff that you have to fill up with the molten redstone. Um, and then we're using universal cable, the advanced ones underneath these machines to provide them all power. Now that's all fine, but the other thing is we can put the items in, but we need the items to get out of these machines. So we can use cables, conduits, whatever to extract out of these IC2 machines, or we can use the IC2 specific item, one of the upgrades that you put into the machine and it will automatically eject for you. And I think that's what we're gonna wanna do. So that's called an ejector upgrade. Yep, these guys right here. There's an advanced ejector upgrade automatically output to the first valid side. I'm not, actually, I'm not sure what the advanced one does. Doesn't look like there's a recipe when I click on it. And then there's a fluid ejector upgrade. But anyway, we just care about these. So in order to make that, we need to get ourselves either some tin plates plus a piston, or we can do nine at a time for one piston, but it does cost the extra tin. So let's do dense tin plates. We already have that available. We'll make four of those. It'll craft everything up. But unfortunately, the uh, tin plates are gonna end up over here. Yep, and we are going to have to ex remove them manually. So that doesn't have any upgrades. Let's put five in here. That should speed it up. Let's put 10 in there and speed it way up. Oh boy, that's awesome. Okay, so put these upgrades back in the machines I really care about. We'll have to finish upgrading that later. So we have the four dense tin plates. That's good. So let's make this guy, we'll say that recipe. There's our ejector upgrades. And then the way these work is the block you shift click on, like the side of the block, is what that gets set to. So if we do a shift right click on the on this uh, block here, it'll automatically eject to the top side. Awesome, so that's what we wanna do. So these three machines, we're gonna install these upgrades in. Let's put them in the bottom, I guess. That should be fine. Yep, and anything that gets processed in this machine will then be ejected up into this interface, which will go back to the system and complete the auto crafts. Awesome. So at this point, let's take a look here. Do I have any pending crafts? Yeah, that didn't finish. We'll cancel that. If I wanted to make four more of those dense plates, let's try that again. Actually, let's grab our um, the overclocker upgrades. We'll put those into the machine over here so it goes a little bit faster for us. Okay. So that's in there. So if we request four more of those dense tin plates, dense tin plates, four, it'll take tin ingots, turn them into plates, put those over to the compactor, compact them, and then eject that to the output. So we should see these things as soon as they're crafted come into the ME system and the auto crafting should complete as expected. Yep, that's really, really awesome. These dense plates we will get some use out of with the uh, machine blocks. If I tell it, if I tell it to make that, yeah, it'll just make four aluminum plates and craft them up into these basic machine casings, which is just fine. We're gonna get a lot of use out of that eventually as well. Ah, auto crafting is so good. It takes a little bit of time to get it all set up, but now we never have to worry about making those basic machine casings really anymore. We never have to worry about making the dense tin plates, the iron item casings. Like as we progress here, everything that we do, will just auto craft it. Yeah, and I'll make our life so much simpler. I like the fact that the mechanism cables just convert RF into EU. That makes IC2 super, super, super simple. I don't know how much IC2 we're gonna need to do in the future, but you know, any IC2 we need to do, very, very easy. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.